All right, welcome back to another video. Today we've got, is Roblox a good investment? So this one is one that was prompted by a question that I got on Facebook. And for this slide deck, it's about 37 slides. So sometimes I'm not gonna mention what's on the slide. These are just kind of to guide me and what I wanted to say. I'm gonna try to keep this video as short as possible, but when you're going and analyzing companies, there's a lot that you actually need to look at. So I can only make this so short without making it not thorough enough to answer, actually answer the question of, is Roblox a good investment? So we're gonna to try to answer the question as quickly as possible, um, but I don't wanna shortchange you guys on information. So I went through and I watched the investor presentation. I combed through their actual filing with the SEC to look through their financials. And uh, anyways, let's get into this. Make sure you guys hit the thumbs up button if you appreciate this. This one won't get very many views just because it's it's a lot more in depth, uh, but anyways, let's get into this. So agenda today, we're going to go into what prompted this video. So what prompted this video is, is I got a question, is Roblox a good investment? Roblox business model, Roblox financials, which is the most important part, that's towards the end. I'll timestamp it if you just wanna see that part. And will I be buying Roblox? And if so, at what price? So if you wanna just see the Roblox financials and will I be buying it, hit the timestamp uh, if you already know what Roblox is essentially. Okay, so what prompted this video? So I got this, got this text message on Messenger. Basically it says, is Roblox a good investment right now? Um, and my response was, I can't tell you. I see it's going up in price, which actually recently it's going down in price. I'm recording this on a Monday, but I'll have to look into the current company earnings to t tell you that. So that's what I'm doing right now. That's what prompted this video. Investment defined. So. What I would define as an investment is something that actually pays you as the owner or has the potential to pay you as the owner. So a speculation rather is buying something that you think that someone else will buy for a higher price at a later date. So that could be arbitrage or in other words, buying something and selling it somewhere else for more. So that could be time arbitrage, buying it now, selling it later for more, buying it geographical arbitrage, buying it in one place, selling it in another place for more. You can't get that with the stock exchange. So what we're talking about is time arbitrage. So you can speculate in land, you can speculate in a lot of things. Um, but the last thing is momentum investing, or in other words, the greater fool theory. I have a video about the greater fool theory, um, or technical analysis, market psychology. So those are, those are basically all betting on the price. So investment defined, I would, invi I would define it as something that pays or has the potential to pay you. So by that definition, Roblox would not be an investment at all. But what has the potential to pay the owner? Cash flow in real estate and property, profitable businesses that generate free cash flow for shareholders. And uh, just for those out there who don't know, free cash flow represents the available cash for the company to repay creditors and pay dividends and interest to the investors. So companies may not always use their free cash flow to repay creditors or pay dividends. Sometimes they might use it to reinvest in the business. Sometimes they might use it to buy back shares. It's basically the cash that is available to use within the business. Okay, the biggest mistake investors make. So this person who messaged me is probably about high 40s to mid 50s. Um, it's an old uncle of mine. Um, yeah, so a, a mistake that I see older investors make is that they're running out of time. They've made worse financial decisions earlier on in life. So they wanna make up for it by getting very high returns. And I would like to caution people against that. That's not the way to go. If you move backwards, for example, I had a poll on my story one time that was, if you lose 50%, how much do you have to gain to gain it back? You have to gain 100%. And if you look at the rule of 72, if you think the average return is about 10% per year on the S&P, if you lose 50% on an investment, you have to wait for about seven years to gain it back. That's a big hit. You'd rather accept a, a lower return rather than trying to get this higher return and cutting your wealth in half at age 55, right? That's, that's not, it's not a good thing to do. Okay, younger investors. The mistake I see younger investors make is that they haven't had the time to see the power of compound interest. So for myself, I have parents that were more well off. I've actually seen this work, the things that I talk about, I've actually seen it in action. I've seen the whole thing, right? 
seeing my parents go from their young 20s to uh, the more ripe age that they are now. I won't mention that, <laughs> but I've seen the whole process, right? So some most people haven't seen that, right? Most people's parents did not uh, raise them in such a way. Young investors are susceptible to get-rich-quick schemes, and young investors are not patient and do not know it's worth it. Don't think it's worth it to get started. So a lot of what I see out there is people think like, oh, I only have $100 to invest. Why would I even get started? Well, before you can get to 1000 you got to start at 100 Before you can get to 1000 before you get to 10000 you got to start at 1000 right? 100000 million, so on, so on, and so on. So if you hold a company that's growing free cash flows through earnings over a 10-year period throughout history, you've made money. And that's pretty much any company that's growing that's growing their earnings, growing their free cash flow year after year. If you held it for a 10-year period, you made money. So I want to get those, get those out, and we'll go next slide. Is Roblox a good investment? So we already said this. I would not consider Roblox an investment at all. It's not what I would call an investment. It's a speculation. But now we answer the question, is it a good speculation? And if so, at what price? But first, we're going to look into the uh, business model. So there's no guarantee um, or even a high probability until the business has underlying fundamentals. So you generally know that a business like, say, Kim Kimberly Clark, they're profitable. They have a very set business model. They have a business model that's needs-based. And we know that over time, as the government continues to print more money, as prices continue to go up, they will continue to sell their product and they will continue to increase your investment and uh, grow not only um, in their prices that they can charge, uh, but they also they also grow market share. They're a great company. Uh, I own that in my personal portfolio. One of those boring companies. Okay. Will the price of Roblox increase substantially over time? We don't know. Next slide. Uh, Roblox a business model. Okay. So one thing that people don't know about Roblox, and I didn't know until I started looking into it, is that Roblox is a platform. It's not necessarily a game. So Roblox is less like a Netflix and more like a YouTube. So Roblox basically is something that developers can come onto and they can make their own games. And Roblox is just kind of a middleman, which is nice. Middleman platforms are very nice. Like Google is very profitable and we'll compare Roblox to Google when we talk about our price target later on in the video. Okay, 32.6 mil, 32 million daily active users available in 180 plus countries. They have partnerships with Sony and Microsoft. So they're on the biggest gaming consoles. Uh, they do have a pretty large market share of the gaming industry. So the community spent 30.6 billion hours on their platform in 2020, 2.6 hours per day. So creators on Roblox created over 20 million experiences. So that's one thing that's very interesting about, about Roblox is that unlike, let's say, a Take-Two Interactive or like a EA Games, they don't make their own games. So when developers come onto Roblox uh, and as Roblox builds itself out, uh, there's almost an infinite amount of games that can be on Roblox. So, okay, human co-experience category. So basically what they mean is it's essentially like the Matrix, right? So you can do gaming, you can do entertainment, you can do like virtual toys, uh, virtual items, and even social media. So it's, it's basically creating a visual, a, uh, a, a virtual world. Uh, so... I think that it's very interesting in, in that sense that you can basically create whatever you want to in this virtual world, especially with VR headsets and whatnot coming about. This should be very interesting. Okay, the metaverse. Like I said, basically the, the matrix. So education, one example they gave was instead of studying Rome in a book, you could recreate and explore ancient Rome uh, you know, through, through a VR or, or a video game on a screen experience. So you could actually go experience these events and um, that's, that's more so how our brains are designed to, to learn than uh, reading something in a book. Go experience it. Go see it. Go see it all around you. So economy. Currency. They have a currency. It's called Robux. Operation within Roblox. Uh, Artist Design Studio. Okay. Yeah, so there's, there's jobs. It's kind of like, a, I don't know if anybody out there played Fable. You can have different jobs within Roblox, the Roblox community. And entire studios are operating on the platform. So you've got little studios that are popping up and becoming Roblox studios. Okay, Roblox Premium. This is a premium subscription-based model. So kind of like uh, YouTube Red there. Um, 
which will generate monthly revenue for them. And it'll give users an, an allowance of Robux um, every month. And they'll be able to leverage growth through offering higher value premium packages throughout the years. So as they start to get those higher value monthly subscriptions, that'll be very interesting. So the company does look very interesting. I, I wanna be clear that I actually do, I like their business model, but I'm not willing to pay any price and we'll get into that later. Okay, features, they're doing uh, putting a big emphasis on security. Child security is up 24 seven, patrolling uh, Roblox and platform. And they do have content filters that filter profanity and personal information. In their investor presentation, they went into how they, you know, they might want to, for the purpose of aging up their population to the above 13 and the, to the 13 plus aged population, they might want to ease some of the filters so that people can feel comfortable to do more adult things on the platform. And they are aging up as we'll get into later uh, in the video. Robux client. This is a place where developers and customers can come together to transact. So basically it's like the marketplace like on Amazon or on any other platform. It's where you can, or Facebook marketplace, where you can go buy a game or, or a, a shirt or, you know, whatever. It's where you can go buy things. Okay, Roblox Studio. It's toolkits for developers. So that one, not as important from the uh, investor standpoint. But basically Roblox, the platform, has uh, made these toolkits that developers can go in and use. And it, it makes it a little bit easier for them to produce their games or their whatever they're making on Roblox. And Roblox Cloud. So cloud gaming, for those out there who don't know, it's basically based in servers. So they, you can have a much weaker device that can operate on the Roblox Cloud because the Roblox Cloud is providing the actual computing power. So they're working on Roblox Cloud to uh, essentially expand Roblox's uh, not only capabilities, but its reach. So that will be something that they're investing in heavily. Uh, Roblox creators create keep 30% of Robux they make. So it's kind of like uh, how YouTube, like this video, I'll make some amount of money from this video, but YouTube keeps a good portion of it. And uh, okay, it says the cloud can translate into 11 different languages. So one of their growth drivers is going to be automatic translation. So you can essentially have one person make a game in one language, and then eventually they want it to just automatically be translated into other languages. So. That'll be one of their growth drivers to try to be worldwide and reach billions of people. That's their goal. Okay, I forgot to say one cent equals one Robux. So if you wanna buy something in the virtual world, you have to buy it with Robux. And as of right now, uh, recording this video, one cent equals one Robux. Okay, key growth drivers, international expansion and aging up, which we'll get into in this next slide. So. They've got very great penetration of the 13 and under market, and they're looking to expand into, uh, they're looking to expand through uh, use cases, uh, decreasing loading times and, exp and uh, expanding fidelity. So basically making, making it so that the gaming experience is, is more adult um, and making it so that it's more useful for like uh, us old, old folks, uh, old millennials, remember playing Oregon Trail. Uh, something like that, right? If, if, you can, if you can expand into meetings, if you can expand into concerts, if you can expand into uh, schooling, then you can make Roblox a much more, uh, much more robust platform with more use cases, okay? All right, this is their growth as far as hours engaged on Roblox uh, year over year. So as you see, there's a little bit of a cyclical nature as far as Q3 being the most... Uh, engaging quarter. I'm not sure if that's the Christmas quarter or whatever, but you see that the growth is, is massive over, over the time, over time. You see it's massive. So, all right, moving on. Use cases. So kind of went over this already working together uh, as far as they have, for example, they said on Roblox, they actually have their meetings within Roblox. They actually have had a Lil Nas X concert and they, look, they want to bring school onto Roblox. So we've seen school go uh, virtual, and I honestly think that this could be a huge driver in actually making school cheaper uh, or possibly even free. So if we want to actually move into a free college system, what better way to do it than to make it free through the internet? Uh, but anyways, that's just my, my own personal thing. Roblox economy. So 
basically uh, they're helping out their growth by selling pre prepaid cards. So if you've ever been to the store, you've probably seen those Roblox cards that you can go buy. Um, and monthly subscription, we already mentioned that. That's going to help drive their revenue growth. Uh, but the prepaid cards can be bought by younger users. So uh, they're essentially... <laughs> They're, they're, they're going to make sure that, they, that those younger users can take their cash to the store and buy some Robux. The morality of that, you decide. Okay, Loom AI acquisition. So they actually acquired an AI company that is going to do facial recognition so that you can actually have your character's facial animations mirror your own. So you can have more subtle forms of communication. All right, financials, we already talked about selling prepaid cards to the younger users, monthly subscription. That must have been an accident slide there. Financials, capitalization. So there was a couple things that I wanted to point out to you guys. So cash and cash equivalents. We see that the cash and cash equivalents are basically growing. But uh, what I've highlighted here is on a pro forma basis, giving no effect the issuance of 11,888,886 shares of our Series H convertible preferred stock related to gross proceeds of 535 million subsequent to December 31st. So basically what I wanted to highlight with that is that they are growing their cash, but they're basically doing it by issuing shares, which is what they're once again doing through the public markets. So. They're basically, if you're investing in this company right now, they're not profitable and they're issuing preferred stock, which preferred stock, you typically have to pay a little bit more out as far as interest and dividends than you would for like a good, basically like a good uh, highly rated bond. So basically what the market is telling us is that they don't want to capitalize uh, Roblox. They don't, they don't want to give Roblox a loan because Roblox doesn't make any money and they don't know when they're going to get paid back. So they're, they're, they're debt funded right now. That's mostly what I wanted to point out to you guys with this slide. Okay, revenue. So interesting thing about the revenue, which we'll get into later, I believe, in, in, the, the, uh, in the presentation here, is that revenue and their actual bookings, which is people buying Roblox, Robux, are, they're, not, they're recognized at different times. So any durable goods are recognized uh, throughout the lifetime of a, of a uh, subscriber, which is two years. And uh, anything that is consumable, like let's say that they bought some food with Robux, that's recognized in the, in the year or quarter that is on the balance sheet or the, uh, the earning statement. So we see the revenue is tra trending up very nicely. However, we also see, I think we can see the losses are also trending up pretty nicely here. So they're piling up the losses, but they're also piling up the revenue. So if you're buying into a growth company, you're buying into revenue growth and the potential for profit. And we'll talk about the potential for profit later on in the video. All right. So these non-GAAP measures, these are the ones that I wanted to show you. I wanted to show you these bookings. So that you notice that the bookings, which is the actual money that they're being obligated, is basically an account receivable or something that they're going to be paid at some point uh, or that for accounting purposes, it's something that they, like they've already made, but for accounting purposes, they can't actually show that they've made it. These bookings are growing pretty fast and it's at 1.8 billion over here. Um, what else did I want to show you with this? I think that is about it. The daily active users is trending up pretty nicely as well. We've got 32 million, whereas in 2018 it was 12 million. Uh, all right, let's move on to the next one. Bookings in the million. So yeah, this is, this is basically the same slide here. So we see the trend here. We see that the bookings are rising very quickly. All right. So we just talked about this. I'm not going to go over this again, but take a screenshot of this if you want to take a screenshot of it. All right. For tax purposes, it must be recognized this way. All right. So bookings in billions. So I wanted to point out the compound annual growth rate because now we're going to try to get into what are we willing to pay for this company or is it good to buy the company at the current price? So I want to look at the compound annual growth rate. So this is essentially how you calculate how you calculate the compound annual growth rate. It's the value final over value beginning raised to the power of one over time 
minus one. So when we do that, I, I didn't want to actually physically do that. Also, this is a way to estimate the uh, compound annual growth rate. It's, it's a pretty accurate estimate, but I just ended up using a, a calculator. So let's talk about their compound annual growth rate as far as their revenue. So their current valuation is uh, $38.37 billion. Price to sales is 20.38. Uh, that's extremely high. Um, most people's price to sales you won't see for established companies. It's, it tends to be, you know, in the one to three type of range. So moving on, but with a growing company, you'll see a very high price to sales. So financials, compound annual growth rate. This one is based on what they're actually doing. So this is their actual current financial, uh, their compound annual growth rate based on the bookings, which is a non-gap measure. Um, so 104% is what they're growing compound annual growth rate. And, um, essentially if they were to continue that their revenue in six years by 2026 would be 138 billion. But as I show you guys on this slide, that's highly unlikely. 138 billion would mean that they are just below JP Morgan as far as revenue earned per year. All right, they would be bumping right up against Microsoft at 143 billion per year. So, since we probably don't think that um, this company is going to be as big as Microsoft in six years, who knows? They could be, but I seriously doubt it. They're probably not going to be as big as Microsoft currently is. We have to come up with a reasonable estimate for what they actually will do. So, valuation: 38.37 billion to 2.78 trillion, uh, assuming the compound annual growth rate and price to sales remains the same. They would be the largest company in the world by 2027. So they're not going to continue to grow at their current rate. That's basically what that says. If they continued to grow at their current rate, they would be the largest company in the world by 2027. All right, so let's look at this in terms of TAM or total addressable market. So the entire gaming market in 2020 is 168 billion point three two, and uh, it, the estimated total addressable market, according to this article that I looked at, is 295.63 billion. So that is a compound annual growth rate of 10.5 percent. That's expected for the gaming industry. Um, okay, so their current market share, their current market share based on their actual uh, bookings, is 1.1184 percent of uh, the total gaming market, which is pretty big. It's pretty substantial, not a small company. Um, okay, so assuming that they have no market share growth, they have the same 1.1184% market share, their revenues would be three point, wait, their revenues would be $3.306 billion, uh, which is that, that's assuming that 10.5% compound annual growth rate of the gaming industry. Just for reference, Epic Games is 2.97% market share. So assuming 2% market share, which means that they would be about two thirds of the side size of Epic Games, which is the maker of Fortnite, that would make their sales 5.91 billion. So this is like, if you're really bullish on the company, you think that they can take over 2% market share by 2026. I think that's a conservative bullish estimate, right? So by 2026, it would be 5.91 billion and their compound annual growth rate in revenues would be 21.0154%. Okay, so then I wanted to compare this to Google because like I said, this company is more like Google than they are like EA Games or like Take-Two Interactive. So Google, 2020, they, uh, their revenue was 56 billion, uh, 800, 898 million, um, and their net margin for the quarter was 26.76%. So if we assume that this company is going to make a net profit that is similar to Google's because they're a similar company, and this is just spitball, this is just ballparking, then their net profit by 2026 based on 2% market share would be 1.583 billion in net profit. So currently Google is trading at a forward PE of 30.12 and their stock price, uh, and the stock, the, so the stock price would be forty-seven point six nine billion for um, Roblox, assuming they had two percent market share in the gaming space. So the actual stock price today, as 
as of Pi Day, March 14th, is 38.737. So going back into our compound annual growth rate calculator, if we assume that from now until six years, we actually get, um, so in six years, this price goes from here to here, that would be a 3.69% compound annual growth rate in the stock price. So you'd basically make 3.7% per year in the stock price. So that's not a great return, all right? And one thing I wanna point out here is that you can't buy at any price because the, as you, the price goes up, the expected return goes down. And this is why, all right? Even if they take 2% market share based on the current price, they're pretty much already valued to take 2%. They're valued to take uh, more than 2% market share. So the price right now basically estimates that they're gonna take four, five percent market share, or else you're not getting a market return on your investment. Okay, so what if we make the price a little bit lower and you're still bullish on Roblox? So if we make the initial price $26.91 billion, then we get a 10% return, compound annual growth rate on the stock price. That's what we would expect if we're valuing it like Google. Whereas if we make it a $10 billion market cap and they take over 2% market share and they profit like Google, which is a lot of assumptions, then you can expect a 29% return on your investment, 29.73. So essentially the point of this video is do not buy this company um, at any price. All right, I'm not saying that it's not a great company. I'm not saying they don't have a great future, um, but this company is not one that you could just buy at any price because as you buy at any price, the expected return goes down. So. Am I interested in this company? I actually am interested in this company, but just not at this current price. If it were to go below, let's say 25 billion and start trending into the 20 billion, uh, you know, under 20 billion, I think I'm interested. I'll say that. But anyways, hopefully you guys liked this video. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. I hope this answers your questions out there about Roblox, what I think about it, whether or not we should buy, what our price target should be. I would say anything under 20 billion starts to get interesting for Roblox. So. You want to make a, an, an investment premium on the risk you're taking on. So anything under 20 billion starts to get interesting. Under 10 billion, I'm definitely a buyer. So I'll see you guys in the next video.